Hello everyone. This is a pretty quick tutorial on how to set up skid marks behind your, you know, your racing vehicle. And these are basically going to be the tire tread marks that would appear behind your vehicle when it's kind of the tires are slipping and it's burning out or it's going through a turn or sliding. Um, so what I have here in this scene is actually the downloaded Unity project that's um, in the link to it is in the video description for my YouTube video creating a drivable vehicle in Unity. There's an entire Unity project download in there. Um, it's very small. It's like one point something megabytes. And this is just what I'm using to drive a vehicle around and kind of demo this this tech working. Um, it'll work basically this is independent of car and environment so this will work in any of your scenes or with any of your cars. It's very simple um, and it's mobile friendly. I've tested this um, on an iPhone 3GS which is pretty much the lowest denominator and it works efficiently and well on the mobile device. Um, with that said um, let's get into this on how this is set up. So I have my simple car here. I'm going to pull this out of the way. And we're going to look in here. And I have a skid marks texture in here. You can just grab this texture out of here when you pull this project down. This project will also be bundled up in the video description. There will be a Dropbox link in there to download this. So you can grab all these assets that you need too. Um, here's the material for the skid marks. It's Mobile Particles Multiply. Um, you can actually just use particles multiply or whatever. This is just a mobile friendly version of a material for that. And then I, you know, I just have my car or whatever in here and your car will be whatever it will be. So I'm just going to expand this car hierarchy here and get a few look at a few things here. Now we want to create our two little objects that are going to spawn our, you know, our little tire tread marks. So I'm going to go game object, create empty, and there it is. And I'm going to just kind of move it to where it's, you know, just above the ground and just behind the tire that I want to, where I want it to spawn those, uh, those tread marks. So I've kind of got it right there. It doesn't have to be precise. Maybe just right underneath the tire, kind of in the middle of the tire. Um, and then I'm going to hit Control D with it selected and then just move the other one over for the right tire and just make sure it's lined up under the tire and kind of relatively in the middle okay now I'm gonna name these I'm gonna call this one right skid and then we'll call this one left skid okay I wanna hold down control and left click on both of them make sure they're both selected and just drag them into the car hierarchy so that they're inside with the car, okay? So we have our two things that are going to spawn our skid marks inside there, okay? So I'm going to shift select both of them. I'm going to go component, effects, and add a trail renderer to both of them, okay? Now the trail renderer does not have a material plugged in over here, so we're going to go and expand our materials, and we're just going to drag in, left mouse drag, the skid marks material to both. So now they both have the material that they need. Okay? A couple other things. I'm going to shift select both because we can edit the attributes on both at the same time. And um, these settings could be different on yours. But basically, the start width and end width is basically the entire width um, as wide as it would be the texture coming off of the wheel. So 0.75 in my scene. I figured out is pretty much the width of, of the tire tread would be that's coming off. And time is how far it's going to stretch out behind the car before it kind of disappears. Now that's why this is a mobile friendly um, optimization here because this thing is kind of destroyed not too far after it's left the vehicle. So it doesn't hang around in the scene on the ground. You really don't want that on iPad or iPhone or Android or anything like that. Okay. So we have our two skid marks. Now what we're going to do is wherever your art wheels are in your car, mine are right here, left rear and right rear, I want to add the skid marks texture to them. Okay, And you can add it to the other front wheels too, but right now I've got it set up just to be on the rear wheels. And as you can see, um, I'll remove it, and we're going to go from our scripts, grab skid mark, and just drag it onto it. Okay, skid marks. And now the left rear and right rear wheel have the uh, 
script that they need on them. So they're asking for corresponding collider, which is the wheel collider for that wheel. So the right rear wheel, the collider for it would be the right rear wheel collider. Okay, and that's the collider it's going to be actually reading the physics from for um, this collider right here. It's going to be reading the physics off of where this little point right here hits the ground and how, when it's slipping. Okay, so let's go to the right rear wheel and left rear wheel and plug in the associated collider there. Okay, now it wants the skid mark prefab, which is actually not a prefab. I kind of set it up a little different, but it'll still work. So let's drag left skid into the left rear wheel collider. This is the left rear wheel, so we want the left skid on it. Okay. And then we want right skid behind this one. Okay, and so we have the script plugged onto our art wheels for left rear and right rear. There it is, skid mark script applied. We have our two skid objects that are actually inside of our car, so they'll follow with the car. That's what's important as they stay with the car. And we have the spots here where we kind of want them to spawn, and you'll see later how we can kind of tweak that. And um, on the skids themselves, we've set our time that we want it to kind of destroy itself and its width. So we're going to hit play and just kind of test these out. I'm going to drive forward, and then I'm going to do this. And you can see we are forming skid marks. I'm going to pause it. We're going to go over here and look at the car. And you can see it creating the, you know, the trail wind renderer there behind the car. It's a camera facing thing too, so sometimes it um, displays a little strange, but you can work around that. So anyway, you can see the width is not quite as wide as our tires should be. So I'm going to go in here and we're going to, oh, not on that one, and just tweak these the width. And you can see that actually we need to be, and anything you change when you're in play mode, you will lose. So just tweak it. Stop hitting play, go in and make changes to these, and then you should you should be able to your adjustments will stick this time. So it really seems to be about the right. Now you can see that it's kind of clipping into the ground. Okay, that's not cool. We don't like that. We don't want that happening. You can see that here. So what that's telling me is is our little nodes here that we put in here, left skid and right skid, are just too darn close to the ground. So we need to grab both of them and kind of lift them up in the Y. And as you can see here, we're at point negative 0.32. Yours will be whatever works for your world, okay? And so they're a little bit up off the ground now. They shouldn't interpenetrate so, so bad. And I'll show you something else, too. We'll shift select both and kind of just move them back. And you'll see how their position affects where you know it's spawning from so I'm gonna drive and then I'm gonna slide and you can see that now it's kinda of spawning well behind the wheels just kinda of weird so I'm gonna hit control Z we'll go back and I think I undid my y-axis fix yes I sure did so let's just make them both negative 0.32 and just make sure they're a little bit up off the ground okay and then I don't like the width on them so you can see you'll do some tweaking okay and then now we'll try again hit play try to slide and now they're kinda of looking good and see they stop when you're not sliding so if you have a lot of slip I'm gonna hit pause if you have a lot of slip on your wheels like forward slip these will excuse me these will also appear when the tires are spinning out on this vehicle, um, if we look at my wheel colliders, like for my left rear, um, forward friction stiffness factor one is like full friction, and so is the sideways. So it's really not slipping a lot. You know, if you put in a value like 0 0.02 or something like that, then it's going to slip quite a bit more, and you're going to see these tread marks uh, laying down um, when um, when the car's burning out or something like that. Let me see if I can demonstrate the time too. So um, well, we lost it, but if I set the time to one, and then we skid, and then we go look at our skids, they're much longer, so they hang around a lot longer. And you can play with that value if you want to like leave your skids behind the car quite a bit more on the ground, 
Um, the time is the value that's how long it is before it kind of destroys itself. Like I said on the mobile, you kind of want this to destroy itself pretty quick. You know, you don't want it hanging around in your scene. So hopefully this helps you guys, um, you know, get your skid marks set up on your cars very easily. And it looks pretty cool. And it works pretty cool. Um, and it's a very simple method you can see here. It's just adding in these two little things behind your wheels and your car, whatever your car may be. They have trail renderers on them. And then it's just taking whatever wheels you have and then plugging the skid mark script onto your art wheels and plugging in the wheel colliders. Now this works on wheel collider vehicles, but I'm sure it would work on any vehicle that you can get back your, you know, your values for the slippage. So I'll just open up the skid mark script real quick. Sometimes you really don't need to know why it's working, just that it does work. Uh, it reminds me of that movie Joe Dirt where his dad says it's like pause attraction on a Hemi. We don't know how it works, it just does. So, um, Basically you saw the slot in there to plug in the wheel collider and that's what this is, corresponding collider on the art wheel. It wants the same collider for the art wheel as the actual physics wheel. Then the object that we want to plug in for our skid mark prefab which is just the trail render object with the material on it. And functions start when the scene first starts up, when we hit play, we want to say that that game object active is false. So we're saying it's not on. We're not seeing any skid marks. Okay, and then in the update function, um, we've talked in some other tutorials about how everything inside this update function is being processed in red every single frame of your game. So it's they, you, you use it for things like physics or casting out rays to hit and look for things or to detect when buttons are pressed on the keyboard or touches are done. And that's all this code is here is variables for shooting out a ray cast, um, shooting out from the wheel collider here, this collider, and finding its center point on the wheel, the very middle of the wheel. And then, um, you know, it's going out along the suspension distance to the wheel. And we're saying, well, you know, wherever its hit point is, this is a lot of code for its hit point along the center of its suspension. And then we say, well, where's the ground hit, the corresponding ground hit? Wheel hit is like an attribute of the wheel colliders. We're saying, all right, well, let's return and get that ground hit so we know when is the wheel hitting the ground, touching it. And then down here is our logic that actually spawns our skid marks. And we're just saying some mathematical calculations for on that hit of the wheel collider, that raycast going down, it has a value called sideways slip, which is built into it. We didn't have to create that value. It's built into the wheel colliders. And we say, if that slippage is greater than 0.8, then turn the skid mark game object active true. Turn it on. Okay? And else, if the sideways slip is less than or equal to 0.75, which is just like 0.5 lower than this, then turn that skid mark off. So basically it's just logic saying, hey, if we're sliding more than this amount right here, skid marks. If we're not sliding or sliding, we're underneath this value for the sliding slip, which means it's not quite hit this value, then turn it off. And these are basically where if your car is really sensitive and you want it, you want it to um, produce these skid marks much more sensitivity, then lower these numbers and go uh, and when the sideways slip is greater than 0.3 or if it's less than 0.25, you know, and kind of tweak those values. Or if you want it much higher where it only produces the skid marks at a much higher slippage or speed, bump it up 1.5 and then, you know, 1.45 or something. So that's where you would change those values in the script right there for sensitivity of the slippage. Hopefully that explains everything you guys need to get going with um, skid marks in your games and um, you know if you have any links in the comments or anything to games you're working on for mobile or the web players or whatever put them in there and I'd really like to see the stuff and uh, you know showcase it too if I can and share it on the page alright everyone have a good day